three entitled customers tried to give me all sorts of problems at my serving job, making unreasonable demands while also trying to treat me like garbage in the process. But I decided that that was not going to happen as I went back at them just as hard as they were trying to come at me. And as a result, I put all three of these man babies back in their place. Here's what happened. So yesterday I had three grown men give me an attitude and I had to put them back in their place. The first guy, I'll call him coffee guy, comes in and places an order. I gave him his food and coffee and I went on with my business. I was wiping down the high bar when he snapped his fingers at me instead of saying excuse me miss like a normal person with decent house training. I looked up and told him that for starters I'm not a dog but also what did you want? He told me that his coffee is cold. So naturally I apologized and I got him another cup from the pot. Once I gave him the coffee he was like feel how cold this one is. How do you not know this coffee is cold? Now obviously this guy doesn't know anything about ceramic and how well they contain heat so we don't burn our hands off when we hold it but I just ignored him and walk off even when he muttered something under his breath. But let's be honest that's a lie. Y'all already know exactly how I am. You got something to say come say it to my face not behind my back. So I almost snapped my neck turning around and tell me why this guy looked at me as if I just kicked his dog. I asked him if he's got a problem and before he could get a word in I was like what is your problem? I gave you another cup of coffee and this time it's hot. I was nothing but respectful to you and you still gave me a dirty look. What is your problem? Well he mumbled nothing and then walked away. Like sir it's six something in the morning and you came into my job with an attitude. Don't use cold coffee as an excuse to take your problems out on me. He did tip me, but he's still a jerk in my book. Then this other guy, we'll call him carryout guy, came in and placed a to-go order. So I priced his ticket and told him his total. Tell me why he got an attitude saying to me, God, can I get my food first? So I matched his energy and I told him it's the restaurant's policy that he pays for his order first before making it. He then threw the money on the high bar and I threw the change exactly the same way he gave it to me. And as you can probably guess, he didn't like that at all. And during the lunch rush, we had another customer. We'll call him an entitled regular. He wanted to order, but we were just a little bit too busy. I was working on two separate to-go orders, an online order, and tending to two tables. Since I had the high bar, he was trying to get my attention. Now, I told him that I'll be with him in just a minute, but he didn't have a minute, apparently. And he said to me, I just want a large coffee to go. Is that too much to ask? And at that point, the entire diner got quiet. Once I confirmed that he's done with his little tantrum, I told him that either another server can get him his coffee or he can go to the gas station next door, but he is not getting anything from me. Now, another server ended up getting him his coffee, and one of my tables told me that I should have shown him the door instead of giving him options. And honestly, it makes me wonder why some people say that women are too emotional. Yeah, all three of those guys that came in were completely out of line. Like, for starters, in my opinion, if you're going to a sit-down restaurant, the least you can do is have some kind of courtesy to the people serving you. Like they already deal with so many jerks on a daily basis and the least you could do is be a non-problematic table for them to deal with. Have your money ready, know what you want to order and just be a good customer. So it is baffling to me that people would actually act like this in public nonetheless. Like was there a full moon during these interactions? Like that seriously sounds insane to me. Like I can understand somebody being just a little bit impatient with getting their food but these reactions were just completely out of the ordinary and they were just so unexpected acceptable across the board. But with all of them, the one common denominator here is the original poster. They clearly are like the John Wick of servers because they do not take that garbage for a second. And honestly, I don't blame them. She has clearly had enough of these types of interactions, and I don't blame her for firing back at these people with exactly the same garbage they're trying to throw her way. So to the original poster, you are awesome. What you did and said, as well as your just general demeanor of not taking anybody's garbage, is truly something inspiring to see. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My fiance's aunt sent him a text message basically telling him to break up with me. And right now, I'm at a complete loss and I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So I want to start off by saying that I work night shifts. From 8 o'clock p.m. until 4 o'clock in the morning, I work in an emergency pet hospital. I see a lot of crying owners holding their dead animals in their arms, as well as animals with chronic sicknesses, and it's sad, but I do love my job regardless. But, as 
you can probably guess, this is very emotionally and mentally taxing. My fiance, on the other hand, works day shift in the union. He has fun at work with his buddies and gets to mess around a lot. Another important note is that I have bad social anxiety around people that I'm not completely comfortable with. My fiance's aunt was hosting a surprise birthday party for his grandma at her house, which was one state over and about a five hour drive. Since I was working until four o'clock in the morning into Saturday morning, my fiance decided that he would drive to my house to meet me there at four in the morning, which is right when I got off. And then we can set off and I can sleep in the car to try and get a couple more hours at least. We live about 45 minutes away from each other and I live in the opposite direction of his aunt's house. Although he didn't mind backtracking if that meant I got more sleep. Well, four o'clock in the morning swung around and he's not there. It turns out he slept through his alarm. So I call him and we just agreed that it would be faster if I just drove the 45 minutes to his house and then we set off from there. So I lost some sleep. We got in the car and I'm just tired and groggy and honestly just a little bit salty that he didn't show up and slept through his alarm. But hey, it happens. Now, I barely slept during the whole ride. The sun was in my eyes through the blanket I had over my face. The recliner seat was uncomfortable, just not ideal. I overall was not well rested at all. We get there, I say hello to everyone, and I ask some family members who are already there some questions about their dog, mostly because it's a common interest of mine. I let the family talk for a while and then I sit down and listen. I'm a big listener and I never have a lot to say regardless. So I do that while staying present. The party rolls around and we eat and talk to some people here and there and I go over to the couch and I put a blanket over my legs. I am so exhausted at this point that my eyes keep closing and I simply couldn't help it. My fiance suggested going to take a nap but I refused until the guests left and this is all because I didn't want to be rude by going to sleep so early and as a side note we were staying at his aunt's house for the night. I just wanted to be around still but I was too exhausted to stand or even keep my eyes open. I asked his aunt for a cup of tea at some point and we exchanged some words about how good it is. Then my fiance and I went to bed because we were both pretty tired but in the morning there was a very weird feeling in the air. I ignored it and just chalked it up as my anxiety or something like that and I told myself that it's my feelings that's causing me to be anxious for no reason but it turns out it was actually a gut feeling. The very next day he receives a text message from his aunt pretty much saying how rude I acted the entire night and that he should never bring me to another social gathering that she is hosting ever again. How I had apparently made it clear that I didn't want to be there and she even ended her message by saying listen I'm saying this out of love she is not for you. Now I was pretty taken aback. No one had said anything to me about it. They knew that I just worked a night shift and barely got any sleep in the car. I really didn't know where this was coming from. The worst part is is that my fiance immediately submitted to his aunt. He sent her a text back saying how embarrassed he was by my actions and I really didn't understand what actions I took though. I smiled at people. I listened when they were talking. I was present and I am just a natural wallflower. His aunt also insinuated that I'm painting myself as a victim by blaming it on the night I had prior and also my history of social anxiety. It seems that he won't fully be on my side about this and he told me that his family has been right in the past about other stuff so he would rather trust their opinions even on the chance of them being wrong about it. So how can I deal with this situation without making it awkward for the next time I see his aunt again? What should I do? I want to start off by saying that the fiance's aunt is completely out of line here. First of all she's trying to act like you ruined the party like even at a base level just by being there and being present and trying to talk to people and listening to what they're saying that in and of itself is pretty benign when it comes to like social interactions and at the very least it shows that you're there you're present and you're trying to have some kind of like pleasant interaction overall so for her to chalk up you being like what maybe slightly tired or something like that as you being rude at her stupid party is just ridiculous to me but that's not even like the biggest problem in this situation it's the fact that your fiance didn't stand up for you that really bothers me like a lot in my opinion like why would he not be like no you're completely wrong she was just really tired from working all night. It baffles me that he just let that happen and basically let his aunt walk all over you. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but if my family started to talk garbage about my fiance, especially when I knew my fiance didn't do anything to warrant that kind of garbage, I would definitely stand up for her. I wouldn't take that for a second. So the fact that he like rolled over and showed his underbelly, that's like a massive red flag in my opinion. And I personally think that's like the bigger issue in this grand scheme of things than anything else. Because at the end of the day, he let these people 
people say horrible, false things about you. And in my opinion, that is completely unacceptable behavior. Today, I messed up by continuously taking naps under my desk during work hours. But as you might guess, karma finally caught up to me as I got exposed by my manager and my entire team as they walked in to find me sleeping underneath my desk. And I've never been more embarrassed to be caught like that in my life. Here's what happened. So I'm a civil engineer and I work in the engineering industry, which is one of the complicated technical industries. Sometimes at night, I review work reports before submitting them the next day and I have to make sure that everything is 100% correct and safe. I start reviewing late, maybe like 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning and then I finish at about 4 o'clock a.m. Now, mind you, this is during some nights, especially when I'm dealing with a project with tight deadlines and it's very complicated. And the writing of reports are, of course, earlier, like maybe days earlier. Anyways, my office has a desk and I've been taking naps under it for quite a while now. Actually, I moved the desk to a unique location back in the corner of the office facing the door. Since I'm a civil engineer, my work also requires me to be outdoors. So on days when I spent the night reviewing, I come to the department manager and tell her that I'm going outside to check on projects and she just gives me the green light. But what do I actually do? Well, I go to my office, I close the door, and then I take a nap. I have my pillow and blanket under the desk and the desk is wide enough and big enough to take a nap there. Since it is a big city with traffic, assuming I'm outside, my naps are usually 30 to 40 minutes and sometimes even an hour long. Now, a lot of the time, my team looks for me because we work on group projects as engineers together, but they could never find me because I was taking naps, which in effect would slow down their work and their productivity. One day, my team was looking for me when I was taking a nap. They were looking for a project document that we work on, and that's when I heard them and my manager's voice. They entered my office, and I could feel my face turning red underneath the desk. I was hoping that they would just leave. Unfortunately, the project documents were inside my desk drawer, so my team and the manager walked to check the drawer, and I was exposed. Every single one of them looked disappointed, and I didn't know what to do. I just stared at them while I'm down at the desk. It was the most awkward moment of my life. The most disappointed person in the group was my department manager. All she said to me was, my office now. In the end, she gave me a formal written warning and ended up assigning me additional responsibilities. But overall, this was seriously embarrassing and I still think about it to this day. That is seriously so funny to me. You not only got away with this for a while by being like, yeah, I'm going to go outside for like an hour, but you also effectively like slowed down everybody else's work. So by doing this, you essentially brought everything to a boiling point and your exposure of sleeping under your desk was like inevitable at this point. But with that in mind, what kind of hours are you pulling? You work until four in the morning and these people are wondering like, oh wow, why are you sleeping under your desk? Like these people are squeezing all the time out of you they can possibly get and this job overall sounds like a really exhausting job. So the fact that your job would give you more work just as like some kind of punishment instead of getting to the root of the problem, that in my opinion is really weird and that just doesn't seem fair. So sure, you got in trouble for taking a nap at work, but for a little bit there, you actually pulled it off. And personally, I find that incredibly funny. My mom is blatantly trying to start drama by talking to my brother about debt that I apparently owe him. And honestly, given the track record of my mother, I am seriously not surprised by her antics. Here's what happened. So I live in a house with my brother. My name and our mom's name is on the deed. And the way the deal was struck two years ago when we started this is that all three of us would move in together and expenses would be split three ways. My mom provided a little less than 50% of the cost of the house and I got a mortgage for the rest in my name because I'm the only one with good credit. My brother fixed up the house and he equated the work he did to around $10,000 if he was charging a stranger. I also paid $10,000 in materials and at one point during construction we all got into a screaming argument where mom and I threatened to kick my brother out and he told us that we couldn't. I looked him in the eye and told him that I would pay him $10,000 for his work and then I would kick him out. Well, he decided to not press his luck and the construction continued. The intention was for mom to live there until she passes away, my brother to continue to rent the property forever, and me to eventually move on and buy another house. Well, my mom decided not to come and live with us, and then I started paying for work to be done. I was concreting the front walkway, getting gutters put on the house, we had plumbing and HVAC problems. I mean, the list goes on and on. I also do all the communal cleaning and even cleaned his bathroom before I stopped and thought to myself, wait, why am I doing this? Honestly, it's not good for all 
of us to live together, I mean, we just don't mesh at all. I also didn't understand the impact of two mortgages on my lending capability, and I won't be able to get out without renting somewhere else for five to ten years at least. We ultimately decided that he will be moving out, and he's now been looking for a few weeks. Well, he approached me last night and brought up the $10,000. Apparently, mom tried talking to him about it, and honestly, it took some effort to control my face. That money has been more than made up in his reduced rent over the last two years. And if anything, I thought that he would ask to take the fridge and washer that he brought with him, and I would offer to buy them off of him. My brother basically said that mom tried to talk to him about it, and he distracted her by changing the subject, but he did want to talk to me about it. It essentially boiled down to this. He said that he didn't want the $10,000. He said that we're family, and that you shouldn't take money from family. He said that he found a place, and he wanted to move at least by the 7th, but he's trying to lock in the first of the year instead. So he then asked me if I would be willing to waive the rent for January and also let him keep his tools in the shed. I then asked him point blank if she was trying to get me to pay him and he essentially responded that he cut her off because he couldn't hear the whole thing. Now, part of me thinks that this might have been a negotiation tactic to get me to agree, but to be honest, I already expected to waive a month's rent, give him an extended move-out period, and let him keep his tools in the shed. I also told him that he could keep his house key so that he can access this shed and I also said that I would help him move. I have a lock on my bedroom door and that's where I keep my valuables so honestly there's no worries about him getting into anything of value. He told me he would give me a copy of his new key for emergencies and replace a faulty bathroom light before he leaves. So thankfully negotiations were successful. I have no idea if my mom was trying to start something else by bringing up that $10,000 but if she actually intended for me to pay it, she was absolutely insane. I mean, how wild is it to promise someone else's money to somebody else? I honestly wouldn't put it past her, because in the past, she has definitely prioritized him over me. Okay, so I have to agree with the original poster's, like, suspicions here. It really does seem like the mom was trying to stir the pot. She clearly wanted some kind of drama in some kind of way, and it was really smart that the both of these kids basically saw through it and said, no, I don't want the money, let's not do that. So good for you for getting negotiations taken care of. Because based on what you described, this seriously could have been a nightmare to deal with, but thankfully things were able to work out for the best and nobody fed into any more unnecessary drama. An entitled neglectful mother isn't paying nearly enough attention when their kid accidentally breaks the train door with their backpack, resulting in everybody in our trolley having to get off the train and find another means of transportation in the cold and rainy weather. And I've honestly never been more annoyed by an interaction in my life. Here's what happened. I had an encounter today that I simply had to share. So I was in a packed tram minding my own business when I noticed an entitled mother with her three kids in the same wagon. The scene was already set for a typical entitled parent story, but little did I know how much it would escalate. For reference, there are two types of trams where I live. The old type with small doors and high stairs, where wheelchairs and strollers are not allowed, and then we have the new ones which are accessible. Well, you guessed it, the entitled mom made it onto the old tram that I was on, even though the next accessible tram was just five minutes away according to the screens. Her kids were already whining and extremely unruly. The four of them, along with their huge stroller, occupied a significant part of the tram. It was 6 o'clock p.m. This is right when people were commuting, so the tram was packed with people returning home from work. And well, the situation was ripe for more entitled behavior, and trust me, it definitely delivered. The tram stops and it's finally time for the kids and this entitled mother to exit. But just when I thought the worst was over, something else happens. One of the brats had a small shell backpack, which got stuck in the old, forcefully closing door. The conductor had to get out to try and free the trolley, and understandably she was pretty angry about the situation. What blew my mind was the entitled mom's reaction. Instead of apologizing or taking responsibility, she started crying out, I am a mother, I have three children. As if that somehow exempted her from being responsible for any damage caused to the tram. It was baffling how she played the mother card instead of acknowledging the inconvenience and potential harm caused by her and her kids. The situation left many of us in the tram shaking our heads in disbelief. Well, finally, the trolley gets unstuck and the entitled mom and her posse left the train. But that's not the end of it. The best, or I should say the worst, was yet to happen. The door was now broken and the tram could not continue its journey. So, thanks to the actions of this entitled parent, all of us had to disembark in the awful 
cold and rainy weather. There I was, forced to run through the rain just to make it to my appointment on time. The whole ordeal was frustrating to say the least, and a perfect example of how a dumb parent's entitlement can affect so many others. Besides, if her kid got stuck in the door instead, it could have turned out pretty ugly. Yeah, I totally understand what you're talking about, especially when you describe a parent who's basically just not watching their kids in a public setting. You would think that that would be the one place you would want those kids to behave and listen to you exactly. Because if you're not careful, then one of your kids might break the door and ruin everybody's day. And I know if I was in that situation, I seriously would have been frustrated. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.